Welcome everyone, Adam Luwu here to Tank Land. That is the nickname given to one man's personal collection. And from what I was reading up on, one of the largest collections of military vehicles in the West, at least on the West Coast, in the open air, in the elements. It's a little sprinkly and rainy today, but that's not gonna deter me, and hopefully you, for checking this place out. Join me, shall you? Located in the town of South El Monte, California, only open a handful of days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. As I make my way towards the entrance, I have to walk past all of these vehicles. As stated, it's all outdoors, including a porta potty and a tarp, which is where the entrance is. Seniors and vets, $4. Those 10 to 16 years old, $3. Children under nine, $1. And if you're under five, you get in for free. First impression, I think this is gonna be an informative, exciting day. Remember, it is a misdemeanor to tamper or remove any part of these vehicles, punishable by imprisonment. Wow. That's the manager? Yeah, it's right there. That's the manager. I was going to say it was the guard cat, but I was informed that this is the manager. So I'm going to need a name and a How's city. How's it going? Place. Hey. I should also mention if you plan on coming here in the future, if there is heavy rain, like today it's just drizzling a little bit, you can see, you can see the water dripping in that little puddle off of this tarp. But if it was raining heavily, they have a, a problem with flooding and they are not open during heavy rain. Number 146 was used in a movie called Wind Talkers. It is a Japanese light tank, Type 95. You can see the number there. Just match up the 146. And there it is. Very informative that they provide this book. Match the number up, number 64 and so on and so forth. Pretty cool. This one was used in Vietnam, and after reading the information, it says that very little protection was given to the driver and those operating it. So when the cannon blasted off, you have to hold on pretty tightly, because there's not a lot of protection up there behind the blasting area. If you don't want to use the binder and you have a smartphone, you can use a QR code to get your information. This is an anti-tank gun and a much larger one back there next to the next to the road. In front of this helicopter is a massive propeller weighing 29,000 pounds. You would need a, a forklift to move this. And while I would call it a propeller, the nickname for it is a screw. True story. AKA screw. This can be used in the water. Also carries a Jeep as well as soldiers that climb up in there. Looks like it has an oil drip pan down below the engine. This is known as a dumb bomb. And don't quote me on this, but I believe it got its name because there is no guidance system and they are just free falling. Wow. That thing's gotta be like, 45 feet long, I'm guessing. This tank's just pointing towards the traffic. I wonder if someone just looked over to the right as they drove or to the left, saw this thing pointing at them and kind of was like, whoa, what the heck is going on? An air raid signal, very loud. And the sound protrudes out of the sides. I guess it'd be similar to what Midwesterns no, as a tornado siren. Probably the same, the same decibel level. Also designated inside the book is a layout, a map of the property. Not only do they have displays over here in this section, but there's also, of course, repair shops and a restoration area. Going a step further, they describe the anatomy of a tank little explanation of what each piece is from the radio antenna to the turrets 
So the tail light, a suspension, a suspension bogey. Is that how you pronounce that? A gun mantlet, hatches. There's the main gun there. Drive sprocket. All right there on this. Getting more into the cargo and personal type of vehicles. You know, the troops would have loaded in the back of these to get to their destinations. And speaking of, they do need volunteers. If you want to sign up, everywhere you look out here, there is just stuff everywhere. This antenna and some projectiles in this area. And this cart is how they get them from point A to point B. Now look at this little thing. Some sort of scavenger hunt going on out here. People from off property, they ran in and this is one of the stops and now they have to grab these sandbags and create something and then move on. They didn't pay admission, they're not guests of the museum, but this is one of their stops on a project, I guess, through town. Created a bunker. This ball used to carry 300 pounds of TNT. It was an anti-submarine weapon. It's already heavy enough as it is without the TNT inside of it, but once you got that loaded up, it weighed 1,400 pounds. If you've ever wondered what it was like to stare down the barrel of a tank, that is, that's your first-hand look. That was it. I read up the information on all of these, but this is a mystery. There is no designated number in front of it. What the heck is this? It's almost like a space pod. Very futuristic looking. It says Sergeant Fletcher on the side. Never seen anything like that before. Pretty cool retro looking truck here. Ooh! Here's another slightly unusual looking item. After reading up, it is an external fuel tank designed for the F-111 medium bomber jet aircraft. They put fuel in that thing. I always like looking at the logos on the side of the vehicles, you know, like different platoons and their, their mascots. This is the Seabees. It's like a fly holding a gun used in the U.S. Navy. Uh, there's a costume contest in Pomona. Oh, in Pomona there's a costume contest? Military costume contest. Oh, very, excellent. So you guys are just coming here beforehand? Yeah, we thought we'd check it out. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> you guys look awesome. Next to the destroyer is this police vehicle, which can be used on land but also in water, used in Vietnam but was given on loan to the Los Angeles Police Department and was used up until 2004. You may have heard of a cattle guard. This is not for cattle, but it looks very similar. There's spikes protruding out of the front of this. You'll definitely stay clear of that one. Oh, yeah. oh my God, look at that. So the other part of it is, or maybe, You can access all of the components, right? They don't build them like they used to. So, I mean, this whole thing basically opens up. Um, I don't know if some of the other museums are going to do this. So all of these little rings were for tie downs. The ammo racks. For this. And then eventually end up in front. So the first aircraft that had the armored seats. So me, because I'm taller, I would be above the protective area. Exactly. Because I'm just too big. You know, they, the pilots... You, and, you and stand the, on this to stand Yeah, up. you can step on here and then just... Uh, All just right. Make it a little dusty. Going in. But, I mean, this is totally old school. You're almost like playing the organ. 
because you got to know what you're doing with your feet. It's like playing the organ. It would be very confusing because you got to use your hands and you have to use your feet. There's a lot going on. You got the push button here. You got all these little knobs. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's the same gun that was in Empire of the Sun, Flags of Our Fathers, 1941 with John Belushi. Christian Bale broke his leg on this when he was 13. Wow, that's cool. Nice. So again, this took a crew of five, the rounds would go in here. And the actual firing mechanism is right here. Yeah, the sheriff's department helicopter was flying over showing somebody something. We were following him. And uh, we get a phone call about five minutes later, disp dispatch forwarding a call from the sheriff's department saying, please don't follow me with your 40 millimeter bofers. And the guy was a Vietnam pilot. He, didn't, he, didn't look right. he was having some flashbacks, but, uh, <laughs> but anywho. Um, but this was the most popular gun in World War II. Getting your ankle off of, off of the, uh, um, the seat, you can see, you can, you can get it pinched, you see how it's... Oh, you got it stuck in there. Yeah, exactly. So, and every weapon, every gun system has a placard, so if you want to know when it was made, it says 40 millimeter M3, Firestone Tire and Rubber Company, 1944. things this is like someone going through your closet you put you know the shirt back without the hanger yeah yeah it's how to piss off people this is the only gun tub left from the USS Missouri anywhere and we have it and it used to be 1992 when they had the um, retrofit for the cruise missile they contacted us and said hey do you guys want the gun tub from the Missouri and we said sure why not well this is it so the, the battleship is in Pearl Harbor, the gun tub is in El Monte. Wow. Go figure. And and for those of you that are into Star Wars, remember the Imperial Walkers? Absolutely. So George Lucas came here, or I should say it came to Bell because we weren't here when he was sketching. And does that look familiar? I was noticing that earlier that it looks very similar. Yep. And so that's that's where the idea came from. So this was an experimental anti-aircraft gun that the Air Force used. Never went into service, but ended up showing up in Star Wars. All of these are demilled, meaning you can't fire through it. There's a plate up front, but all these components come off. Yeah, you know, in World War II aircraft, they would do this, and of course, it carried over into artillery units. And you called it a nose art? Yeah, the oh nose art from from uh, the Air Force. They would that started it, and then other units, you know, would would name there so this is you know bring on the rain so as you can see you know what's the caliber it's 155 and this would fire around 26 miles so from El Monte you could hit downtown Los Angeles no problem you pick the building now if someone would sit here yep you'd have a crew of 10 10 people in this little thing yeah you have one two three four then you'd have folks off uh, site that would be help with loading of the bags of uh, powder and ammunition there's auto loading, they funnel it up here and go right into the breach. So this was, uh, I think when I was thinking of joining in the US, it was uh, 1970, this was a popular gun. We got this from the uh, Seal Beach Naval Weapon Station. This is an RC controlled boat. Special Forces uses it. Navy calls us, demolition units like, um, you still have the boat? And it's like, yeah, we still have it. It's like, don't touch it. It's like, okay, uh, they send out their unit, their bomb unit. They said we had about 20 pounds of C4 on it that we forgot to remove. Oh my gosh. So uh, some of the little stories you don't hear about. So it was on this boat. And if we would have hit the button, this whole section would have been taken out. So these bombs, any idea what movie they were in? There's a famous scene with Cuba Gooding Jr. and 
in Pearl Harbor where you follow the bombs down to the deck of the ships. So these motion picture and television painted these up to be Japanese bombs. Um, but if you go to Pearl Harbor, they're actually much larger than this. But CGI, you know, is a little, yeah. little different world. So this is from the movie. Airborne ammo carts, there's a scene in The Longest Day, John Wayne gets injured, and he's like, I'm gonna lace this up, you know, just put me on the cart. These are the carts. Oh, well, this is the tank. This is an M60. He stole the tank? He stole the tank from the armory. And you can actually pull it up on YouTube, if, if you don't remember it. We fired this up eight years ago, it was sitting. Uh, for over over eight years, put some diesel in it, put a battery, turn the key, started right up. You know, Detroit. There's something to be said for uh, anything made in the U.S. So the first thing that happened was the barrel started rising because this is all pneumatically controlled. Commander seats up on top. Um, and notice there's a locking bar that keeps the barrel down because when you first turn it on, the uh, the barrel will start to rise otherwise. How far did he get before he was before he stopped? Uh, I was like, I don't know, maybe maybe 15 miles. He drove over an RV, drove over cars. I mean, it was crazy. And then there's an escape hatch that's down here, weighs about 400 pounds. So if you need to get out, you don't climb out through the top. You'd actually climb out through the bottom. The bottom, there's enough room that you. So could, the driver would be right in here. Yeah. Could poke his head out of that hole exactly. if he needed to. Exactly. So and and here's you know since the engine's on fire, there's a fire suppression unit. You pull these. And uh, from the outside, they can't, they lost two brothers. And Saving Private Ryan. And uh, they're trying to get the third one out. And they come up in a command vehicle, two officers to tell the mother what's right. going on down this dusty Iowa road. Well, here's the, uh, here's the command vehicle over here. Here's the Plymouth. Oh, with the yeah. With the suicide doors. <laughs> wow, that's cool. A lot of movie artifacts out here. Right? Like, where do they go? It's like, it's not on the back lot at Universal. Yeah. So, um, It's here in El Monte. It's in El Monte. El Monte. Yeah, right, right here. She's wearing a little pith helmet, you know, pointing, you know, and it, it, and it totally pissed everyone off because... Jane, Jane was, Fonda was sitting right there. Yeah, that's right. Viet Cong, uh, nice propaganda. Well, she's still alive, so, you know. I think she's in a new movie now. That's gonna do it for today from El Monte, well, south. El Monte, California, here at Tankland, officially known as the Military Museum. I will put links in the description to their website and more information if you feel like visiting here. If you are new to this channel, if this is the first time here, please subscribe now. By doing so, it helps keep you up to date on future adventures I will be going on and in the loop for uploads that will be happening on this channel. I'll see you in the next video, the vlog is over. Oh, I didn't even see you guys in there. What are you up to? Just hanging around? Taking a nap? You guys just... just chilling? Alright. See you later.